today. There's a lot going on, and I'm pleased to welcome Majority Leader Joe Shikarchi. Thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. Always love coming on with you, the great Kate Nagel, and our good friends at Go Local. Well, I appreciate being up here, being able to get access to the legislators, and there's so much going on politically right now. But have to ask you, the news that Go Local broke this week, Warwick Mayor Scott Avedesian leaving for RIPTA. You represent District 23 in Warwick. That, that is correct. Scott Avedesian is leaving in, <laughs> in Warwick, and I do represent District 23. Yes, so correct. the question is, do you have any interest in the mayor seat? Uh, the, being mayor of Warwick is a great job. It's a great opportunity. It's something that I've thought about for a long time. I used to work in the mayor's office in Warwick. But politics, as in life, everything's about timing, and this is not my time. Uh, I will not be running for mayor. As a matter of fact, I'll make an announcement now on your show that I will be running for re-election in my district, House 23 in Warwick. I take great um, responsibility with my constituents, the work I do there. I want to stay there. I think there's a lot of good things I have yet to accomplish in the General Assembly. My new role as majority leader, I take very seriously. Uh, my members of the caucus supported me for majority leader. I made a commitment to them to stay, finish the term, and do a good job. And I'm enjoying the role, so I plan on staying as majority leader. So before we tack back here to the State House, let's talk a little bit about Warwick. So now is not the time for mayor of Warwick. Talk with us a little bit about what you think of Scott Evadesian's legacy as he moves on to RIPTA. I cannot say enough nice things about Scott personally, but also professionally for the job that he has done in the city of Warwick. Uh, first of all, he's the longest serving mayor in the history of the city. He's been on the council for 10 years. He's been in the mayor's office for over 18 years. He's run the city in a very bipartisan, professional manner. He runs, runs, uh, excuse me, works uh, as from a person on uh, an ability of coalition building. He does a tremendous job, and it's a good. It, he's going to have a great success at Ripta. I'm happy for him, and I don't think this is the last you've heard of Scott Avedesian. I think he'll be very active in the community for many years to come. He's a talented individual, and Warwick's loss is the state's gain, and specifically Ripta's gain in getting someone with Scott Avedesian's talents there. And so, Warwick, with this now, folks looking at who is going to be the next mayor, what are going to be the deciding factors? What does Warwick need in a mayor as folks are looking at that position? Warwick needs someone very experienced, someone who understands the budget process, someone who has experience in the city council. Being mayor today in any city and town, but especially Warwick, is not an easy thing. You have the police union, the fire union, the teachers union, which you know we know has been a very difficult issue in the history of Warwick, municipal workers. You have a lot of development. You have the airport. There's only one person I can think of who has that ability, and, and, and I believe it's his time, someone extremely talented, and that's the City Council, Council President Joe Solomon. I'll be supporting Joe. Joe is an accountant. Joe is a lawyer. Joe served as a municipal judge in Warwick. He's got the temperament, the talent, and the passion to continue what he's been doing on the council. He has worked very uh, good with Scott Avedesian. He's also what I would consider someone pro-taxpayer, pro-development. Uh, Joe understands it. Joe Solomon is who I'll be supporting for mayor, and he's a very talented individual. Have you have been having conversations with him since the news this week? I did. I called Joe Solomon today. I told him I was coming on your show, Go Local Live, to announce that I wasn't running and I will be supporting him. As a matter of fact, I'll be hosting a fundraiser for Joe next month. Okay, well, that's part of the talk that's been going on this week. A lot of political talk, but we're back here after recess. Tell us about your agenda for the rest of the year that you are looking to see accomplished. Well, I'm still working on my specific bills. Some of them are Warwick bills, some of them are airport bills, my mastectomy bill, which is a very important bill. She spoke uh, about last time we had you really, on. And I'm also mm. working on my PEC rumors regulation bill. I'm trying to come to a uh, consensus with the stakeholders on that. But more importantly, as majority leader, I have to look at the calendar every day. I have to floor manage the bills. And obviously the biggest issue, that our, our biggest responsibility as a house is the budget. In the first week or two in, in May, we'll be getting our mm. forecast. We're gonna to put together a budget and that's our single biggest responsibility. And that is significant. And that how's the budget goes is the state goes. And so I'm working collaboratively with our finance chairman, Marvin Abney from Newport, the speaker, the house fiscal staff, and also with the members and all members, not just the Democratic members, but I work very well with the Republican members. We have a you know busy agenda, a calendar. It's election year. We're going to try to get out relatively early. That's the hope. But obviously, the people's work is very important. and We have to get it done and we will get it done. And talk a little bit. Last time I had the speaker on the show here, we talked that he was having conversations with the ownership of the Pawtucket Red Sox. Do you expect we'll see something before the end of the assembly session? I don't know, I, I, pun intended or no pun intended. Uh, the final inning of that game hasn't been played yet. 
I can tell you honestly, there is very fruitful, very um, passionate, and very constructive discussions going on between the House fiscal staff and the stakeholders, the city of Pawtucket and the Pawtucket Red Sox. I don't know. I have not been a part of those you know, uh, discussions, but I know that being productive and fruitful, I know that everybody's working hard. Everybody would like to see a deal that keeps the Poor Sox here in in Rhode Island, in Pawtucket specifically, but also that's what I would call taxpayer friendly or protects the taxpayer. So those two um, you know, parties, or all the, the three parties involved are working passionately to get it done. I don't know the answer to that, and that's the truth. And we'll have to wait and see. But I will point out, we still have about 60 days in the legislative season, and this could happen at any time because this is an issue that we've been talking about for two years, it's been vetted. The Senate had many public hearings, the House has had hearings. We're continuing this process. The House had a caucus about the Boar Sox. We're going to work hard to do the best we can for the taxpayers of Rhode Island. So while I have you here, have to talk a little politics as well. We have seen No. <laughs> Kate Nagel is going to talk politics. I have breaking news for Go Local. Kate Nagel is going to talk politics. Going to talk politics. Uh, the GOP has been very much on the attack against the Speaker regarding the Board of Elections, the money he had to return to the leadership pack, and also the Shauna Lawton mailer. What have your discussions been with the Speaker around this? Uh, there hasn't been a lot of discussions, believe it or not. We're actually working on uh, stuff. The money was uh, paid out of one account. It should have been paid out of another account. Look, a mistake was made. Uh, the speaker acknowledged the mistake. He took corrective action for the mistake. And he hired a CPA to prevent it from happening again. There was no fines at all. There was no penalty at all. There was a warning, you know, this is the best practice to do it and don't do it again. I don't think it's really going to play out there a lot in the community. Um, I understand it's political season. I understand that Republicans, you know, have to say this. But I don't, when you say the Republicans, it hasn't been really the House caucus, the Republican mm. caucus, maybe one particular member saying things. But the reality is uh, we have work to do every day in this General Assembly. These distractions or noise, as they call them, will not impact our ability to carry out our agenda every day. And speaking of politics, I have to ask you about another Warwick mayor. It's going to be an interesting primary for the U.S. Senate race. Do you think this is going to be? A very interesting time as we see Lincoln Chafee looking to primary Sheldon Whitehouse. If he, in fact, does go through with this, and, and I, I know Link and I like him and I respect him, but as we all know, he is uh, a person who has a great deal of ability to change his mind at any time, and, and that's certainly his prerogative. So if he goes through with this, let's preface by that, mm. it will be interesting. Uh, I, I have to say this as someone like Kate Nagel, who follows politics, this was a little bit of a Come out of left field, you know, Fenway Park, the big monster left field. Staying We're, on the baseball thing. Staying on the baseball thing. So we have to wait and see uh, if he actually goes through with it. But it, he'll be interesting, and it'll certainly be a spirited race. He has the personal resources to put a competitive race on. Um, he's got name recognition. Uh, Sheldon Whitehouse is also a very talented senator. He's He and Link, uh, which is very usual dynamic of Rhode Island politics, they're very friendly. And their children are friendly. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this plays out. But Sheldon Whitehouse has had a political operation up and running in the state for six to nine months. He, he is uh, very um, committed to the race. He takes it seriously. We'll have to see how it all plays out. Link Chafee is a wild card, and we'll see if he goes through with this. <laughs> and speaking of the news this week as well, Matt Brown looking to run in the Democratic primary for the governor's race. What's your thoughts on that? Uh, interesting. I've been out of politics for a long time. I think he realized, I th I'm, I'm not going to speak for Matt Brown, I haven't talked to him in about eight or nine years, but I think he realizes that there was really no path for victory for him to run as an independent. And I think he needed to look at if I'm going to, you know, really make seriously what's the best avenue for him. He concluded, he decided that his best path was to run in a Democratic primary. I don't know. Governor, who I am supporting, uh, is very committed as well to the race, has a lot of resources, uh, that, uh, seems very much aware and takes the candidacy of the election cycle very seriously. She'll have the resources to put together a, a ground game. A Democratic primary is a ground game. She's made very good inroads in the traditional Democratic base. It's going to be hard for Matt Brown to break that. But he has every right to run. This is a free country, and this is part of the democratic process. So it'll be interesting, and you know we'll see how it all plays out. I expect races in the general assembly. I expect you know races in the state level. So it's going to be a fun year. And for those people that go local who follow politics so passionately, like Kate Nagel does, this is a windfall for you guys. Mm -hmm. It's an exciting year. You can check out. We have on the local today. The big story was how much politics has changed here in the last 48 hours. 
Be sure to check it out. I'm going to let you go, Majority Leader. I appreciate your time today. I'd love to come back anytime. Okay. Always love to see the great Kate Nagel and come on TV and go local as well and give my best to all the good people that go local. Well, appreciate your taking the time to come here on Live at the Statehouse. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with our next guest.